so important to be in the right environment so you can prosper and become the best version of yourself. Today's guest is a good friend of mine, Jim Dimmick. He's a former professional rugby league footballer and coach. A Tongan and Australian international New South Wales state of origin rep, lock forward and 5'8", he played club football for the Sydney Western Suburbs Magpies, the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs, Parramatta Eels, finishing his career in the Super League for the London Broncos. He then embarked on a coaching career, becoming the head coach of the Tongan national team. He spent the latter part of 2011 in RL season as head coach of the Canterbury Bulldogs and is the assistant coach of the Cronulla Sharks as of this year. But we've got the scoop today. He is now moving to the Gold Coast Titans. Jimmy, um, I know you're a good friend of mine and we've been mates for a while. And I know we have a lot of banter, but let's try and keep it serious today. Welcome to the Muscle and Mind Show. It's great to have you. Um, mate, let's start with uh, the big move to the Gold Coast Titans. I know a couple of weeks ago you told me there's a bit of news. Um, obviously, every Bulldogs fan uh, want, wanted to see you back at the Bulldogs. Tell us about the move to the Titans and why you've decided to um, leave the Shire. Uh, and more importantly, leave me and <laughs> Koji. Well, on first of all, thanks for having us on, Mets. Um, it's good to be here. Right. Um, yeah, I think just fell into place uh, last couple of weeks. Um, it was just had a yarn to um, Justin Holbrook. He was in a, when I was at the Bulldogs. He was a reserve grade coach when I was there, so uh, we got a bit of history there. And um, he was just asking me if I'd like to come up there. And a uh, big thing for me uh, for the move was uh, my wife's. Mum and uh, family are up there. She's got three brothers and two sisters up there. So, And one of the brothers is not doing so well at the moment. So um, it's a good time for me to, to go up and uh, spend some time uh, with her family. I guess, you know, with with your job, obviously that, that's a massive um, uh, and, and important to make sure that, you know, your family's always okay and, and your wife's close to their family there. But... Obviously, going to the Titans, you know, if you have a look at the teams that, you know, came last last year and where they were able to move up the ladder, you know, Manly and, and Parramatta respectively, fifth and sixth. Um, going to the Titans, you know, a lot of people would look at that as a as a huge challenge. And obviously, um, there's a fair bit of work to be done there. When you looked at the job, did you kind of look at, fuck, there's a fair bit of work that needs to be done and, and are you guys kind of hopeful for you know, next season ahead, is it going to be one of those seasons where you, you kind of go, let's set some foundations or he's going to go like any other team does and go, we're going to go for the top eight. We've got enough talent there. Uh, first and foremost, um, for me, it's family first. Hmm. So that was a no-brainer for me. You know, um, getting a bit of job security up there and having Lee's family up there, it's a bonus, you know, like, like it's everything, you know, so... Hmm. Happy wife, happy life. So, um, yeah, you know, just with with the Titans, you know, they've got some um, good players there. They've got a uh, uh, big area, great nursery there to produce a lot of talent. And I think um, going up there is not, you know, looking top eight or top four or uh, let's get off the bottom. I think we just got to try and get the culture right and um, just work on our defence. Uh, for me, the main thing is defence. And everything will flow off that. So, uh, speaking to uh, Justin, uh, you know, we just want them to compete all the time. You know, uh, every little thing uh, that we do is, is going to be a competition. You know, mm. uh, we just take one racket at a time and then see see where we go. And and looking at Justin, obviously he's really done well in the Super League. Um, obviously you've got a bit of history with him. Tell us a bit about your history with with Justin prior to taking this job on. Uh, well. Uh, when I was playing over at the Dogs in 93 and that, uh, 93 to 95, uh, he was playing in uh, under, under 20s then. Mm. Uh, no, 21s, yeah, 21s then. So, yeah, I knew him from then and um, then he came over as a, 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 the reserve grade coach. Uh, 2011, they, they won a competition. So, yeah, we had some uh, good times yeah. back then. So, yeah, it served me well. Could you see him doing as well as he has in the Super League? I mean, you were, you played with him and you've known him for a while. Could you have seen him do so well? It seems like you know, you know, the Aussie coaches that go to England, 
seems to be a good nursery for those coaches coming back to Australia. Do you think that's done the world of good going over there? Yeah, definitely. You know, for him, um, he's, he's gone over there and done a really good job uh, with St Helens. You know, they're, they're a good club, and you know they've made uh, you know Challenge Cup finals. He's, he's won the comp over there, so he's done a really good job, and I, I think it'll serve him well um, coming back. You know, he was um, he was at the Roosters as well, so he's been under a few good coaches. So I think it'll give him the confidence um, coming back and just you know getting them systems in place and our principles, um, you know, for, for the Titans and yeah, we'll see where we go. Um, the good thing about knowing me, obviously, for you is that when you come down to Sydney, <laughs> um, we are called Titan Fitness. Uh, you can bring the Titans down to Yeah, definitely. To I'll, I'll get them to stay at Coogee there and, yeah. you know, try to, you know, get the boys at Titans, um, uh, Titans gym there and, you know, they've been... You've been pretty um, pretty good to me, Mitch. You only charged me half price. So <laughs> <laughs> you don't charge me too much. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to. If you do bring them and they have a good season, I want to tell you that we're responsible for their turnaround. You know, I love, oh, I love jumping love on the back. Yeah, he does, mate. He go, I don't know what side you follow, whoever's winning, I'm telling you. Oh, look, we've always, always had a special place oh, for the Titans. He's the best. Look, you've um, played over 350, well, 315 games. Um in that time, I mean, we're talking about, you know, some of the rituals and uh, the players go through, you know, some of the best players you've played with, guys like Terry Lamb. Mm. And you were telling me about, um, you know, what he does before game day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, Terry was like a special sort of player, you know, and special person. Uh, he had a routine um, that, you know, day before the game, he used to have like six Coronas and... Uh, He'd have sayos with uh, cheese and tomato on them, and you know, we, we're playing Newcastle uh, up in um, up in Newcastle, and we travelled up the day before, and um, you know we get there, and there you see Terry with his six pack of Coronas <laughs> going up to his room, and everyone's looking at him, and they're going, "What's he doing?" <laughs> you know, yeah. and then the coach Chris Anderson, you know, everyone's looked at Chris, and he goes, and Chris just said, "Oh, mate, look, if if that's your routine, if that's what you do every week." You know, then do it. You know, so you know that that's what you know. Bar was about. You know, but during the week he did all, 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 all his homework. He trained really hard. He was one of the best trainers I've ever seen. Even though he never used to really run a lot because he had no um, no cartilage, yeah. it was just bone on bone. So, but whenever anyone challenged him, he'd come out and then beat everyone in in everything. So no one said nothing to him. And you know, he had his six beers. He's a uh, his little six pack, he had his sayos and that, and then next day we, we played Newcastle and Bar scores three tries and wins the game for us. So it works well for him. What was uh, <laughs> it's amazing because I, you know, if I had six beers, I'd be uh, oh, I'd be up six, <laughs> maybe six sips, <laughs> and cross eyed, six, yeah. <laughs> obviously, certain rituals, um, and, and certain game day patterns work differently for every individual, it worked perfectly for him. Um, obviously, there's some players that need to to, to be focused and hyper focused. If you look at the players today, how many would you say could sort of go, you know, not on what the norm is and, and what the players do today to get prepared for a game? And what are the percentage of players that have to be on and have to be focused? Or is there is there is there a happy medium that needs to be done for each and every player? Yeah, every player is different. You yeah. know, so. Everyone's got a different ritual. Some, you know, are really intense. Some are laid back. You know, when I was preparing, I was always had me Sony Walkman. Sony. Yeah. <laughs> you know, listen to reggae. You know, a bit laid back, but yeah. um, you know, working with Paul Gallon, he's really big on preparation, and you know, that's all he does is um, get his routine right. Yeah. Um, and it takes a while for, especially young blokes, you know, to work out what what's good for you. Um, so, but it takes a little bit um, to get that routine going, uh, get it down pat. But once you get it down and, and it works for you, mm. uh, then you try and stick to it. Or if something's not working, you change a little bit, try to modify it a little bit, but not too much. And you just you stick to that all the time and just make it religious. Mm. And look, if you look at the best performers in any sport, they're, they're religious on their routines. 
And those routines are usually boring and mundane yeah. because you've got to do it over and over again. But it's really the simplest way to be successful on the field, yeah? I think it, it, if you're doing that, you have a routine, it, it brings uh, consistency. Mm. And that, that's what you want as a, as a player. You want to play. You don't want to have one good game here, one good game there. You want to be – and that's the difference of being a, you know, a rookie and an and a, you know, established NRL player. You know, it's blokes that can play – you know, week in, week out, consistently, all the time. And Terry Lamb, he was probably one of the best at it, especially at club land, So, When you look at the modern-day players, you know, we're talking about Jonathan Thurston being one of those consistent players. Like, you'd never really see him having a bad game. No. I mean, apart from the probably the final season, where he didn't really have a bad game, but he wasn't the player he was. You know, yeah. he was banged up, he was injured. Um was he is he was he kind of the same mold in terms of his preparation? Or I don't know if you had anything oh, to do with him, but I didn't really have much to do with him. I know it, know him as a bloke and that, but not I never coached him or nothing mm. like that. But he spent some time at um, Canterbury, yeah. so I think he had that uh, work ethic ingrained in him, mm. and he took that probably up to um, to the Cowboys. And it's yeah, the, the best ones are the ones always working on their game mm. and anyone can work on their strengths mm. it's the ones that work on their weaknesses because you're yeah. only good as your weakness at yeah. the end of the day when you were playing did um you know obviously you're on the chris anderson did he ever pull you aside and say look jimmy you need to work on these parts of your game especially when you're sort of new to the club or was it was it the senior players that kind of gave your hand to have a look at where your game was and where it could be um, um Ops was um pretty laid back he he was a good coach for me because I was a pretty laid back character. You know, I've gone from uh, Warren Ryan, who was, you know, intense, and I enjoyed my time with Warren. He's very uh, methodical uh, with with his game plans, and uh, like you, you have to set up, you know, two plays for a big play and get there and, and run a certain certain sort of shape. And I was only 18, 19 back then, so you know, I'll just turn up and. You know, just dawdle to the, to, you know, to the position, but it always got there, yeah. and a little bit lackadaisy, and you know, he sort of didn't like that sort of style. Mm. But um, what it did teach me was uh, was about repetition and mm. uh, muscle memory. So yeah. uh, we pre practiced so uh, so many times uh, the same shapes. Um, mm. You know, we tinkered with them, but you know, that put me in good stead mm. um, for my rest of my career yeah. and learning um, all, all the. All the shapes that uh, we had to learn, I had to learn because I was playing. I was a bit versatile, and I was playing hooker. Mm. I was playing five eight, and also also lock. So I had to remember all them three positions, and we had like a hundred different plays. So yeah. um, if I wasn't on, you, yeah. you get a little kick up the backside, or yeah. you get a rev up on, from the walk. But yeah. I thought that put me, um, you know, in good stead going forward. Um, when I went to the Bulldogs. Um, with with Chris, he was a bit more laid back, yeah. and it sort of suited my style. Um, he just, he, you know, he really just told me, you know, like just play what you see, play what's in front, you know, like you know, definitely if the shape's on and yeah. and you see something different, just you know, play whatever's in front. And I thought Canterbury was more ad lib, and it suited my style. You yeah. know, having Terry Lamb there and you know Craig Polamana, and you know, we had some um, great ball players there, and, and Jason Smith and. Uh, Dean Pay, so it really suited my style, yep. uh, playing off the cuff. Uh, yep. I was a bit more of a backyard football player, but I could always play structure, but I, I preferred to play off the cuff. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you've been at a lot of clubs, <laughs> right? Yeah, you've moved around a fair bit, even as an assistant coach. Mm. Everyone knows you as you know the guy from the Bulldogs, like the you know Jimmy Dimick from the Bulldogs, and you know everyone's everyone loves you down there. Yeah. Um, obviously. Uh, you know, not getting the job and just missing out. Um, do you ever see yourself, you know, going back there or do you ever see something presenting itself there? Because I know if there was probably one club that you'd like to coach at, mm. it was at the Bulldogs because that's where your heart was, right? Yeah. Oh, well, definitely by far um, Canterbury's been the best club I've ever been to. But as a supporter, as a supporter, I always supported CS. Yes, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm a South man at heart. Yeah. But um, as um, as a club, I, Canterbury did so much for me. Um, I spent three years as a player there, and you know I left on 
on good terms. We had a bit of a in '95 uh, turmoil year with the Super League war, mm. but um, you know I, I did a re-entry there that they um, accepted me back as a coach, and I ended up spending um, ten years as an assistant coach there. Mm. So I spent a long time there, and uh, the only reason why I left was um, at the time, you know, Des Des obviously got sacked. Mm. He moved on, and and I just thought, you know, I'd be the natural, natural man to, to take, take over. It. And um, I think that year that the board um, they had a it was an election year, so I think they had to see, you know, they had to be seen to be doing something different. And you know, they went in a different direction, um, um, signing uh, Dean Pay as head coach. And you know, me and Dino, nothing against Dino because he's going for a job as well. So there was no hard feelings with Dino. Um, I was just a little bit, you know, uh, confused on, on, on what happened, uh, why I didn't get a run. So yeah. I've been there for so long because previously before that, um, they spoke to me when Des came in, I moved over for Des in 2012, which was understandable. Like he, he just won the competition mm. and they sat me down, uh, Toddy and um, uh, Ray Dib, and mm. they said, look, you're going to learn a lot from Des. Uh, you will be, become a better coach and... And I, I took that on board and I understood that and I, I copped that on the chin mm. and I moved, moved aside because Des is an absolute wonderful coach, mate. I learned so much from Des and I'm grateful that uh, to be, you know, um, you know, taught by him. Um, some of the stuff I learned was uh, unbelievable and I, I'm really grateful for it and he's still a good friend of mine. So, mm. so in, in saying that, you know, I thought I'd be the, you know, be, be straight in, So, but, but it, w- it wasn't to be and... You know, Dean obviously got the job, and was, I, I can honestly say this hand on heart: there was no hard feelings with Dean because it's not Dean's fault. You know, like he got the job, and I was happy for him to get the job. Um, but for me, it was just just heart heartbreaking, and they wanted me to stay and, and you know, still be part of it. But I couldn't turn up and, and see the board, you know, there and, and mm. knowing they slipping me, not slipping me the first time, but the second time they slipped yeah. me hard. So, yeah. and I just couldn't stay. Um, uh, just on principle, you know. Yeah, yeah, so it had nothing to do with the players or the club. Um, you know, I can go back to the club and, and they'll welcome me uh, and yeah. open arms. And yeah, if they, they wanted me back, I'd go back. Yeah. You know, for sure, they got a new board there with, uh, you know, with uh, Lynn Anderson and that. So mm. I'm, you know, pretty close to them. So yeah, I wish them all the best. Yeah. Well, you, th- you then went to the Cronulla Sharks, and I guess the same kind of thing happened. Obviously, John Morris was there a lot longer than you, and they they kind of gave um, the job to John Morris. I mean, there was another opportunity there that yeah, but uh, I understand that you know you, you're I, more I, happy with that decision 100%, than the you know, one at Canterbury. I understand that. I wish Canterbury, the, the board then were were you know, did the same for me. You know, so um, John, you know, obviously played for the club and he played over three hundred games. You know, in the NRL. So, and also he, he was through the system. He, he coached the 20s. He, he was doing the academy. Um, so you know, he had a lot of history there, and I understand he was coming through, excuse me, coming through the ranks, and uh, good on him. And I, I wish him all the best, you know, for next year and, and also the Sharks. I guess the, the question on a lot of people's minds, Jimmy, is um, is Jimmy going to go for that first grade job? Like, is that still your aspiration? Is that still something that you want to do? Like, you still want to be a first grade coach? Mate, definitely, mate. Oh, mate, I've got aspirations of being a first grade coach, but I'm not going to burn anyone mm. or do the wrong thing um, to get that job. So, yeah. you know, one day, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, you know, I'm I'm just so blessed to be involved in it. So yeah. I'm so lucky. You talk about you know you you know your loyalty, which you you are, and and you talk about not burning anyone. Mm-hmm. Obviously, <clears throat> being a first grade coach and taking someone's job, that happens a fair bit. To get that first grade job, and, and and when you don't go, when the board comes to you and asks you about a coach and how they're going, and if you obviously if you don't burn people, you don't get harder to get the job, right? Oh, I don't know, mate. That's it. All depends, you know. Like, um, what the, what questions they're asking you. You know, yeah. I'm not gonna you know try to make myself look good on the back of someone else looking bad. So I just I'm not gonna bag anyone or. Yeah. Do anything um, against my integrity yeah. to try and promote myself. You know, I, I don't want to compromise that, and that's just a person. Yeah, and uh, look, being your mate, I know what you're like, and integrity is a big part of who you are. 
Um, there's no bullshit. So, I mean, the, the, the reason I was asking that question is because you are so loyal to those that are loyal to you and you, you do, you know, rep, you know if, if you have a look at the word integrity, you do represent that. So, no, I totally get it. And, you know, when a lot of people ask me the question, you know, why isn't, you know, Jimmy in this position or, or, or whatever, sometimes when you have that integrity in a sport where there's politics and there's politics in every sport, sometimes it doesn't serve the, the, the individual that does the right thing all the time. It doesn't mean he's less of a coach. It's just that there's certain things that you have to do to become a coach. Yeah, but I, I, I'm not saying that coaches out there and out there backstabbing no, people, no, you know. No, that, that's not at all. I'm just saying that's the way I that's am. That's the way you are, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You know, it is what it is and, you know, like one day, you know, it, something's going to pop up and if it's there, it's there, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll go for the job and if I get it, I'll get it. If I don't, you know, if I don't get it, we move on, yeah. you know, but um, I, like I said before, mate, I'm very blessed to be, you know, I've had a you know, good uh, career in, uh, as a player and, had 15 years as an assistant coach and, mate, if I wasn't an assistant coach, I'd have to get a real job. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that'd be hard. I'd be working at the Titan <laughs> Fitness. <laughs> Look, I guess if the Titans write you a good reference after that, I'll, <laughs> we'll take you in. Let's switch it. To, let's just switch gears to your training. I mean, you know, we see you at the gym. You do a lot of full body workouts. You get on the BOSA ball, do a few balancing acts <laughs> there and... Um, I think the last workout we had, you said, fuck, Mets, you've come a long way. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit about your training, how often you train. I mean, you've kept fit after your career. How important is it for you? Yeah, it's very important for me because I've got four daughters, you mm. know. So, <laughs> 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 no, um, you know, I just like, I've always, you know, had that work ethic and I like to be fit and training hard with, um, I just love being around other people when they're training and it just makes me feel better, so... You know, um, obviously my training's um, changed a lot over the years. You know, it's not just about how much you can bench or how much you can squat. I'm more into um, functional strength and um, some core, more core stuff. So I've learned that over the years. I think you get uh, a bit more longevity, um, especially stretching more. I hate stretching. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I try to do a bit of, not yoga, but um, yeah. reformer or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah it's... It, Use it or lose it, so yeah. as Ronnie Palmer says. Yes, yep. No, he's exactly right. I mean, you've seen me train. Um, oh, you're awful. <laughs> <laughs> you own a gym and you look terrible. <laughs> if, mate, if I was there 24-7, I'd look like an Adonis. Uh, <laughs> mate, you got a gym there at uh, Corona Sharks, haven't you? Yeah, but i got to work. What about mate? Bomber? I mean, he's in pretty good oh, shape. Oh, Bomber's ripped. Huh? He's ripped. Is he still training as hard as he was? Yeah, he trains very hard, but he um, also – he. On a strict diet, not yeah. strict, but he's, yeah, he's, he's on the you money. know, he, he's he eats well, you know, yeah. he eats clean. Yeah, um, you, you know, when you look at the game these days, and they put so much more into recovery, a lot more than what was back in your day. Um, how important is, is is recovery to the players? I mean, we're talking about you know how important sleep is. Back when you were playing, was that even talked about? Oh, when we played, like. You played on a Sunday. They used to flog you on a Monday. So, oh, really? Wow. You know, try and run it out. But everything's changed now. It's more scientific. It's uh, Everyone's on the GPS. Everything's – they know how, how many metres you've gone, how many clicks you've done, your heart rate. You know, they just over everything. So you, you can't hide out there. Uh, they know if you've been bludgeoned or – or also just to monitor, you know, if something's wrong with you. You're feeling sick or something, you can, you can tell in the in the readings, or you're labouring on one side. They, they can tell. So, yeah, it's come a long way since when I played, and you can tell they're all athletes now. Uh, heaps more athletes, but not as many uh, footballers. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so the skill level. So when you bring a science into it, you can lose a bit of the skill level, right? Oh, I just think it was more off the cuff. Uh, back then, back in my day, uh, now it's a little bit more structured. Yeah, uh, everyone saying that everyone's got video now. We mm. not many um, sides have video back then. Like mm. now, you can't move. Like you got uh, the analyzer. Mm. Every club's got it. Um, I can just pull up. Let's just say we're playing um, the Cowboys. I can pull up all the all Jonathan Thurston's kicks, his yeah. line breaks, whatever I want. So. Yeah. We, we, we can cut it, we can, um, the video, we, we, we look at it, we, we show um, the, the edges, what, what to do, or the middles, 
how to um, negate uh, different plays. But yeah, it's easy on on paper, or, you know, uh, but it's hard just stopping it on, on the night. You know. Yeah. When you work with the sports science guys, understanding them and them understanding you, um, how how difficult is that sometimes? Like, I mean, there's there's a certain level where. You know, obviously, when they talk about the science and, and they tell them to back off so they can recover enough for the game, how do you see that? When when sometimes you go, mate, they haven't they haven't done enough of the ball work or that kind of stuff. That's going to affect the game or the outcome. Yeah, every coach is different. Um, you know, sports science has a place. I, I just think it's there to, uh, you know, tell you stuff that you already know, but it's it, it's on paper. It's there, like you know, how hard they've worked. You know what I mean? But you know, sometimes. You got to go to them dark places, you know. Um, so, yeah. Um, in the game, so you know when we are under the pump, you can handle that. So, but you know, I think the football player now is it, it, so much bigger and so much faster, and the game so much faster and quicker, and the hits are heaps bigger than what they were back when I played. There was no wrestle then. Yeah, uh, it was just a hit and stick, roll away. Mm. So. You know, the game's come a long way um, you know, since the 90s. Yeah. Is, is there any apps you use, Jimmy? Yeah. <laughs> <Is there> Average <laughs> Comet. <laughs> It'll come well, out in uh, 2060. <laughs> this was the game where I walked home. Oh, not this one, the one before that with the forward pass. Still got bad memories of Jimmy oh, in 1995. The, actually, it wasn't a forward pass, mate. It was only like... Today, there's like... There's a lot more. 20 different camera, camera angles. angles yeah. you know, back then, there was two. There wasn't. It was a bad angle. Was Des Hasler in that game? He was. He was. One thing I've noticed. Like, <laughs> yeah, one thing I've like noticed about the, um, Des and I was, and obviously you, Adam from Noah Blake's had a massive season there at there at Manly. You know, he's just um, compared to where he started the season to where he finished, he started playing so many more minutes up the middle there, and um, and he was still having the same output as a coach. Is that something you build a player up to? Like you give him extra three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes through the season? Because in those last few games, he was playing close to you know seventy minutes on the field. Well, definitely for the middles because they're coming on and off. Um, you, you just try to let them go as hard as they can. If they're playing well, um, you, you, you let them go. So, but it all depends on on the completions. Yeah, if you've got the ball. You know, you got a lot all the time, but like sixty percent of the time, you're not doing as much tackling. So, it takes a lot of juice out of you if you if you're giving the ball up all the time, and then you're on the back foot, repeat set errors or um, leg out penalties. Yeah, you know, and all you're doing is tackling. It takes a lot out of you. Yeah. It's, it's hard to s- sustain that. Um, and I, I, obviously, that energy. Okay, this was a good game. Is that? Is that I think this was at um, Shark Park. You couldn't beat Manly once this year. <laughs> what is that? Like, you know, if, you, if there's any Cronulla fans out there listening, why is it that Cronulla struggle against Manly? It doesn't matter where they play. What is it? Well, I can't tell you, mate. The last two years we have, we haven't, we haven't beaten them, but I can't tell you, mate. It's probably them, one of them sides, them bogey sides you have. Oh, excuse me, and, yeah. and they're one of them. They yeah. seem to beat us all the time for some reason. I don't know. It's, I think it just gets in your head and it's a mind thing, you know, yeah. so... Who was the bogey side for you guys when you played for the Dogs back then? I don't know. Probably Canberra. Canberra, yeah. yeah. Always, I think they still have trouble beating Canberra. There's always there's always a side. It doesn't matter how much the personnel changes. There's always a side that, that, that people struggle with. Are you telling me? That's what I'm saying. Oh, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Thanks. Because we know Cronulla's always struggles with Manly. Yeah, well... You know, the stats are there, and it tells you, mate. They haven't, they've only been them, like. Yeah, see, I was happy after this game, but sad after five the next times one. in fifty years or something. I'm yeah. not sure. So, yeah. yeah. When 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 you obviously see a, a young player coming up, what what are you looking for in that player? Is it is it attitude? Is it discipline? Is it drive? Like, what do you guys look for players that are coming coming up? And can you tell if there's a player that you go, well, that, that kid's going to be special? From say an a- the age of twenty, yeah, you can. But you, as a coach, you're looking um, to see what they're doing off the ball. Mm. Just to, they always talk about the one percenters, yeah, you know, stuff that um, other people don't want to do. So, 
it's always away from the ball. It's when the ball goes away from you mm. is, is when we were looking at you. Okay. You're tying in or yeah, you're staying with your mate, you're staying connected, yeah. you know, um, stuff like that, or kick chase, mm. kick pressure, all the stuff nobody likes doing, that's what coaches look at. Yeah. And does it take a special coach who sort of man manages those players to look at that or is it the player that has to become more accountable to do that? How do, they, how do you get a player to get better at that? Because it's not easy. It's just a mindset, mate. You know, you gotta, it's about repetition, it's mm. muscle memory, and if you do it at training, you'll do it at the game. Yeah. So, and with the coaches, like you've got you know, good man managers like, like Wayne Bennett, Billy Ake and you know Des and that um, for some reason, oh, some reason they've got good, you know, good history. At it. You just want to play for them, mm. and that's what what they do. Yeah. They get the best out of um, mediocre players. They make them you know, lift their level. Yeah. And as a coach, that's what you want to do. Do the players know what those coaches are going to be like beforehand, and go? I'm, I'm really looking forward to being coached by. You know, whether it's Des, whether it's, you know, Bellamy, whether it's... Well, them blokes got the runs on the board. Yeah. So they've got, you know, high standards and that's what they live by. Mm. And I think they get the players to drive it. it mm. You know, it's easy to, you know, to stand there and dictate mm. as a coach. Uh, if you do that all the time, you sort of... It just falls on deaf ears yeah. and, you know, the best coaches uh, let, let the players you know, sort of run run the standards and... Mm. You know, make everyone accountable for for their own job. Mm. But you know, like Des, he he's very good at um, getting the players t- to know their job. Mm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, and that's just from repetition. You know, you know heaps of reps, uh, muscle yeah. memory. Yeah, it, it gets boring sometimes, but yeah. that makes you a better player. But doesn't that sort of um, go across to every part of everyone's life, from work to business? To you know, um, you know definitely, definitely. anything that they do in life, like it's it's the same rule, right? Yeah. It's the same rule that applies to everything. And if you do the work, you're going to get the results. Definitely, look, all, all them good coaches, they're always talking about what you're doing, not just when you're at training, it's what you do mm. away from training. Mm. You know, to try and get that right. Yeah, because you, know, you spend a lot of time away from football, and, and you need to. You, know, you, you can't be. Um, you know, rugby league twenty four seven will drive you mad because you, yeah. you end up hating the game. You know? So when you're away, you know, spend that time with your family, do what you got to do, mm. um, you know, get a hobby, you know, whatever you like doing. Mm. You know, just get something to do. And once you're away, you focus on that. But once you come to training, you know, it's good to have fun. You know, muck mm. around and that. But once it's time to knuckle down, you yeah. knuckle down and yeah. you know the job at hand, and then you work hard and then. Uh, once training's finished, you do your recovery, you, yeah. you, you rehab, your prehab, you do all the little um, little extras, um, and, and that makes you a good player. Yeah. And also it makes you, you know, it makes you a good person as well. You know, mm. um, normally, if you're a good person, you know what you do off the field is normally what you do on the field. If you, you're a good bloke off the field and you know like helping others, you'll do it in the game. Yeah, know? it's funny because I was just over in the states and. Um, I got the chance to interview a lot of the uh, top performers, you know, some of the greats in, in in bodybuilding, and they were just when it was time to train, they were very very tenacious. They they they'd get in there. Are they all are, or are they on the, <laughs> they're on the less boards in that? Are they all are natural, think, or are they on the less boards? Because that's not training. Boards. Come on. Oh mate. look, look. Regardless of that, regardless Please, of that, they're wind assisted. <laughs> it's like the free man or doctor. Regardless of that, <laughs> um, they, they were professional yeah. in their in their in, their, in their field. And and to be fair, everyone it was an even playing field. Yeah, yeah there was no course. test, even yeah. playing field. Six again, six again. But one of the biggest things that I that, that you see that is the common denominator of anyone that's successful in sort of in professional sports or in high performance is there's 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 no safety net for those individuals. So if you have a look at you know footballers, most of them come from you know low socioeconomic. Standards, right? Because and I, and I give no, but, no, but what I'm saying about is like, yeah. you know, like, like and this, this is where right. I'm going. And I was hit, listening well to one of Tony Rallis's yeah, yeah. um, interviews, and and this is what I bring the point. He's talking about players in Australia wanting to make it overseas in in soccer, 
right? And and he said when they're mothered and they're spooned fed here at home, and they're going up against you know African kids and South American kids that have got no families that have got to support their family, Definitely. they work so much harder. And you know when you look at you know probably some of the best footy players that have ever played, you know you know back in the eighties, nineties, and even you know to to recent memory of, of players. You can tell the ones that are the hungry are the ones that were brought up hard and tough because if they if you've got to feed a family or you've got to support you know extended you know people yeah, within the family. This is the way of the jungle, mate. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. So you have to. And, and most bodybuilders that I interviewed there, they came from nothing. Yeah. And they had to work hard with no safety net, and that pushed them to lift the standards and go beyond the means of what it takes to become the best. I think it's a bit, a bit different now, like because the, the players now. It's, I think it's a generation thing too. Also, um, a lot of them come straight out of school. They have got no life skills. They've never worked a day in their life. It's not their fault. Yeah, but that that's just the way it is, you know. And then they end up getting a big whack, um, and it's hard for them to hear criticism. Yeah, you know what I mean, um, they've never been knocked back before. They've always been the best. Mm. So when, when you talk to them. You, you can't say certain things to them anymore. Yeah. So it, it, it is hard and it's a different generation from, yeah. you know, when I come up, like if a first grader spoke to me, I'd just do anything they'd say. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, a little bit different now. They're, they're a bit cheekier now. Yeah. And, you know, they, they talk back, but I, I think it's just the generation you know, mm. today, you know. They're always on their iPhones and it's hard for them, the social media. But they they live and die by that, and, yeah. and that's the way. Um, and sometimes you got to look at them and go like, "Where's the self assessment? Where's the realist within them to have a look at themselves to see are they delusional? Like like if you have a look at some players, right? Yeah, but some of them, if they don't change their ways, that they won't they, they won't last long yeah. in the game. You know, I think the average first grader only lasts about thirty five games. Mm. I think that's the the average first grader. So. Yeah. It's not a long career, mate. So. Yeah. And when you're playing, everyone loves you. Once you finish playing, nobody remembers you. Yeah. So for me, it's all about being humble and, you know, and doing the yeah. right things. And Because once you finish playing, you can be the best player when you're playing, but once you finish, everyone hates you. You're yesterday's hero. Yeah, mate, if you're, you're an idiot, yeah. everyone brushes you, mate. No yeah. one likes you, mate. And then you fall on hard times and, you know, they have a hard time you know, with mental problems and, do you see that a lot? Does that happen a lot? Yeah, heaps, mate. Heaps. Heaps. Yeah. So, and it's hard for them. Like, when they were flying, it's all good. But, you know, you try to rally around them and because you're in the football circle and you want to help them out. So. And they, they do a good job. Um, mental league uh, mm. with stuff like that. Not just you know, mental awareness about, you know, blokes on hard times. Mm. You know, don't have to be a bad bloke. I'm just saying, like, yeah. you can be, still be a good bloke and have hard yeah. times and... But uh, the, the men of league do a great job um, going around helping people. And mm. They're falling on bad times and you know, just trying to rally around them. So pretty. Proud you said of something important early on. You said family, right? So really the family keep you humble and, and grounded. And if you have a look at anyone that's successful, they've got something, whether it's their mum, whether it's their father, and that's the family that sort of kept them grounded or, or made them go to that next level. When you look at those players that weren't humble, do you think they they went against you know the family, or was it something that you know, or did their egos take over because of the sport and where the sport made them feel they were? I I can't I can't answer speak that for them. them yeah. Yeah, speak for them. So, but for me, it's always been you know you know about being humble and you know, mm. always respecting you know, my family and you know, just, you know, I've been you know, very grateful that. Every game that, that I played, my, my mum used to try and come to every game. Uh, she loves she loves rugby league. Yeah. Even when I left uh, the Bulldogs, she still used to go to the Bulldogs games. Did she? <laughs> yeah. She's does so, she support the Bulldogs? Uh, no, she she loves them as a club. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Back in the day, she was a Parramatta supporter. She loved Eric Growth. Oh, did she? Yeah, yeah. I loved him. So. Yeah. Now your mum was a big supporter of yours, right? But she was also very honest. How yeah. many times in your career did you say you had a good game? Uh, a couple of times. But <laughs> <laughs> I so used to the come tough up love worked. 
But it was good. Um, like I used to come off the field, and there'd be the, uh, especially at Parramatta, um, I used to come off the field there and you know, I'd be walking back to the change room and everyone would be going, good game, Jimmy, good game. And then I'd walk through the change room. I could see my mum. She was like about 10 deep and they'd be, you know, clapping me and that. And everyone's yelling out, good game. I look over and see my mum. She'd look at me and go, you played shit. <laughs> I <was> going, <laughs> put my head down. But I, that's how I was feeling, but she, yeah, yeah. she knew, she knows. Um, the standard I try to keep, and she looked at me and she said, "You play shit, you know that." Yeah, yeah I know. So what are you going to tell me for? <laughs> <laughs> but she was she was honest. Um, yeah. yeah, but that's what I needed here. Not blokes pat me on the back okay. all the time saying, "Oh, how good you are!" And that. Yeah. Um, Mum used to just bring me back to earth and yeah, of course, you know, level me out. That's important though. Like, what about your brothers, Milton and Angelo? What were they like? Did they ever tell you how, where you were at or? No, they didn't say too much. Um, I'm the youngest of three brothers. And I've always, you know, my brothers were coming up um, through Woolloomooloo. Um, that was like, Angela was a man-child back yeah. in the day. man-child. <laughs> yeah. So, but he was a he was a good footballer, Ange. Um, <clears throat> he was a big hitter. He, yeah. He'd, he'd knock blokes out or, or get knocked out. There was no yeah. in between. But So everyone was scared of Angelo. And, yeah. and my other brother, Milton, he was probably out of three of us, the best of us. Mm. Um, but he used to get injured all the time. Yeah. So he took up uh, um, martial arts. He took up uh, taekwondo and also uh, jujitsu. Mm. But um, you know, as a kid, I'd always be. They'd always be saying to me, "Oh, your your Angelo's brother, or your Milton's brother." You know, used to drive me mad. You know. Yeah. So it sort of spurred me on to become, uh, you know, work hard and become a better player yeah. or become a better person. So people would. would um, come up to me and say, oh, hi, Jimmy, not yeah. hi, Milton, no, you're Milton's brother or Angelo's yeah. brother. But back then I used to hate it, you know, but but I knew it was, uh, it was a sign of respect for them and yeah. they should have paved the way for me, you know, growing up in, in, in Willow and yeah. they looked after me and no, no one would touch me. Um, I'm not that I was a bad kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was cheeky. Just mischief. I was very oh, cheeky, very yeah. cheeky. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I was always, you know, trying to do my best. You know, coming up through Willow, we... we we lived our life at the playgrounds mm. um, and also the Police Boys Club. You know, the playground was a big part of um, who the player I became, mm. I become. You know, playing basketball, uh, table tennis, snooker, yeah. games, um, mm. anything. And at the Police Boys Club, you know, boxing, they had boxing, uh, judo, and all that. So, yeah. so we used to just go out and hang there all, all, all day, all night. Yeah. And just kept doing that. You seem like you love jiu jitsu. What are you, blue belt now? No, I'm more pearl. No, I'm more white belt. White. Yeah. He's lying, guys. <laughs> he loves his jiu-jitsu. No, no. He's calling me out all the time. <laughs> he knows I'm below white. He just wants to get me in a headlock. But, um, you know, you, you, it's, it's, it's huge in rugby league. You obviously, you see a lot of injuries, um, yeah. especially chest tears, um, shoulder injuries. Do you think jiu-jitsu has had a big part to play in that or do you think it's from something else? Is it from the, the physicality of the game? What is it? Oh, the players are just bigger, stronger, yeah. faster. You got wingers, one hundred twelve kilo. Yeah. So um, I think it's when you you're not in the right position, your shoulder is compromised, but you still go through with the tackle. Yeah. You know, if you have got your arm out wide, it's not as strong as it is as it is nice and tight. So you're going to compromise your shoulder there. So, but yeah, I don't think jujitsu has got anything to do with that. I just think it's bigger and you know it's faster and stronger players mm. of this era. Yeah, because obviously, like there's, you know. When I look at the game now, you see like six or seven players out in the team. Back in your day, did you just have that many players out at one point? Oh, mate, it'll, it'll all depend. Um, you know, sometimes you did, sometimes you didn't. Um, you know, when we played, it was a lot different. They were not as big, but you had to be fitter. Mm. It was, back then, there was only four in the change, yep. uh, two fresh ones. And two blokes had to play half a game reserve grade to play first grade. So and once you're off, you're off. Yeah. You couldn't come back on. So mate, the front rowers, I think Blocker was only about 109 kilo or something like that. So and he was a front rower. Yeah. You know, mate, that'll be a scrawny winger these days. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon the game will go back to to that? Do you reckon it'll go back to that? I think uh, the interchange will will come down. I think come back down to six maybe. And you'll get a different frame on or different body shape of some of the players, mm. especially in the middle. Uh, 
a lot of the, the back rowers can handle the 80 minutes, but yeah. um, it's going to be a little bit more harder for the middles mm. and you've got to be a bit more strategic with your uh, interchange plan. Yeah. Obviously, if you look at the game now, there's a lot of rules. Like there's so many more rules. The, the interpretations are different. There's now I the 10 I minutes. I don't think they're like, like this, <laughs> mate. Not in a bad way, but what I'm saying is that the ten minute interpretation of the sin bin. Now they want to bring the five minute in next year. Like, is this? Does it really become hard for the coaches to when they look at the game going, "Geez, we have got a bad call," you know? Like, look, look, look at Cronulla for instance this year, right? If he's had got your goal kicks, he's a, he's a third. Yeah, but we didn't. I know he didn't. I got two supplementaries. I wouldn't have You know? Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I didn't. But I didn't. <laughs> and and. W- Look, what, obviously the, the pivotal players that you guys had, the goal kickers, you didn't have continuity or consistency there of the same guys practicing week in, week out to kick those goals, which makes it hard. But then when you look at you know a, a lot of the rule changes and the interpretations, does it make it harder for the coaches to swallow when their teams don't go well because they were dotted or they were hard done by? Oh mate, I, I think it was like it's like LBWs, mate. Back in the day, you get your it, it comes around, mate. You get yeah. your fair share. It sort of evens itself out. So, mm. you know, you, at the end of the day, you can't really you got to take the referees out of the equation. Mm. You're always going to get the bad call, or you know, the, you won't get the rubber to green. But I think if you um, you stick into your process, you put yourselves in the right spot, and mm. you shouldn't be in that situation. You know, so. Yeah. I know, I know it's hard. They've got a hard job, the referees. And, and, you know, there's a lot, of, as you said, there's a lot more interpretations. That, you know, I like to go back to to one referee, like the international rules. You know, one but, referee, yeah. Yeah, but it, it's hard to, um, you know, dic- everyone's trying to bend the rules, especially at the ruck. Yeah. Everyone's trying to do their best yeah. and slow the play the ball down. You win the ruck, you, you give yourself a chance of winning the game. Yeah, so, yeah. And if there's only one ref, you, you know, everyone be... Trying to do their best there, but with one referee, you know, there's only one interpretation. Yeah. Well, you know, earlier in the year when uh, Desi came to the uh, the Eagles, you, you get you made a prediction. You said they're going to do really well. <laughs> okay, you, you made a very good prediction there. You're going to the Titans. Can you give us a prediction of where they're going to go next year? Because we want someone to support you, right, Harry? Okay. We want a new My team. prediction is yeah. we're going to go up. <laughs> There's only one way anyway. That's right. You can only go further up. We're going to go up. Yeah. There's my prediction. <laughs> well, you, you did say, actually, you said Manny's going to do a lot better. You didn't say top eight, I, I guess. You didn't really mm. give me that. It's very number. broad. Well, uh, even with, well, one thing. Yeah, but you know with Des, you, you're always going to be around the mark, you know. Like, he's very consistent. Yeah. Any side he, um, he has, he's, he's always in the semis. Yeah. Oh, with the dogs, the first year he came, we made yeah. the GF. So, yeah, you know, he just has that, you know, has that knack of uh, bringing the best out of sides. Yeah. And I think that all comes back through um, his systems yeah. that he has. In play. And it's all defence for him. He's very anal yeah. on defence. Uh, yeah. Everything rolls off the D. And yeah, all sports are like that. You get your defence right, your, your attack will, will come. I, I, I believe that if if he was there for the next season and he was making – it looked like he was going to make changes there anyway. The Dogs? Yeah, like yeah. he was bringing yeah. Kieran Foran. I believe the Dogs would have made the top eight. I think he was make, going to make changes. Do you think that was going to happen? Look, um, ha- having a good roster, it helps, you know. Mm. Definitely having a good roster helps you as a coach. Mm. But um, I think, you, you know, being a good coach, you have to get them players uh, to play for you. And you know the, the best coaches like like, like Des, he brings out the best in mm. in, in players such as uh, Billy Ake and uh, Wayne Bennett. So they just have that knack. Or um, the, the mate when he used to make you know speeches before the game, mate, he used to always come up to me and say, "How do I gauge him?" I said, "Mate, oh, really? I'm ready to go now. I'm going to kill someone." You said that, <laughs> mate, all the time. He goes, "Was that good?" Was that good? I said, "Yeah, yeah." I said, mate, <laughs> mate, I'm ready to kill someone right now. Oh, you said that to yeah, yeah. all the time. But well, did you mean it, or were you just doing him up? Hundred percent. I was pumped. Yeah, really is that good oh, with the mate, speech? It's unbelievable. Yeah, he's good at um, you know, well, just making these speeches oh, that, that to lift you, you know, to, to get you into the game. And I got to go to one of those speeches oh, mate, now that I'm in the dressing sheds. I got to go oh, into one of those. In the sanctum. <laughs> I'm gonna have to talk to James to get me in. No, there. He's very good yeah, at that. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, Jimmy, I just want to thank you for coming back. Obviously, I wanted to bring you on here because, you know, you're moving to the, the – um, there he is there, Des. What do you think of his new hairstyle? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're he wasn't very on. happy this day, was he? No, nah, no. Nah. But um, – no, what, like what do you think of the call? Fuck, what do you think of the call? I was at the game, it really gutted me. I was sitting next to Sam who goes for South, and he said to me, um, let's make a deal – we, we don't hammer each other if the other team loses. So yeah. the bloody stay quiet all the way through the game, even when Manly was scoring. Look, with the call, I, I thought, you know, you, I, I definitely you could give it a penalty for sure. But I just thought that, you know, being a professional foul, you know, was probably a bit hard done by with the call. I think sometimes with the refs, you know, they, they just don't get the feel of the game or, yeah. or the time. Yeah. You know what's going on, and that's right. Like it is a semi final. That's look, that's what Even I thought. With, um, I seen one time there. Um, did someone push someone in the head? Yeah, early on in the game. And they got a. They were going to get a drop out. Of, they got a repeat set, and the the, the well, back rower. South got the pe- penalty. That's uh, right. No, nah, South got the penalty, and there's ten minutes, and it went it against us. The, obviously, because I think it was um, Jake. No, Cody. Cody Walker got ten. Cody Walker got ten minutes. Yeah. So for me, I. I I would have just say, said, listen, boys, that's enough. Yeah. You, know, you do that again, one of you will go to the beer yeah, yeah. and give give Manly the dropout yeah. and just say to Cody Walker, mate, pull your head in. Next time, yeah. you're gone. Well, you, you, you kind of see for State of Origin, they change the rules a bit, right? But it's like semi-finals it's, now. It's, it's semi-final. the same thing. Yeah, I know, same 100%. Yeah. And, and so when you're deciding games on those calls that could go either way, you're going to get a lot more people offside. You're going to get more people disenfranchised with the yeah, game. I think the, the referees get their direction. Um, from above. From above. From above, yeah. Obviously, he, the week before they got in trouble because um, the Canberra bloke, Whitehead, I think he took someone out. Yeah. So they've been probably hammered. But that bloke got dropped. Yeah. The referee. So yeah. and the next week it happens. So yeah. what's he going to do? Yeah. So if he, if he doesn't send him to the bin, he gets dropped. Definitely. So, yeah, I can understand both ways. Yeah, yeah, I'm a keen student of the game too, Jimmy. I Harry's, like Harry's game. Greek, he likes it both ways. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Yeah, but um, mate, I just want to thank you for um, for coming down. Uh, I want to wish you well in your new job. You know, I'm going to come down to the Gold Coast now. I've got more of a reason to come down to visit you. Any down social or up? media? For you're going to come up? Jimmy? Any social media? Instagram? Yes. No, you look. You're you, going to come up or you, down? <laughs> down up. Sorry, I'm going to go up. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, look, guys, I'd love to tell you where to find Jim Dimmick on social media, email, or uh, any other platforms, Twitter. YouTube. But he's on none of them. YouTube. You can find him on YouTube. You can also find him on Wikipedia. Yeah. And yeah. if you want to see him now and then, you can see him on his beautiful wife, Leah Dimmick's social media platform. <laughs> you won't see much. You won't see much. Yeah, but I'm, um, I'm pretty um, private sort of bloke. But thanks for coming down, Jimmy. Look, is there any final words for anyone that wants to be – good at rugby league or anything that they do? Oh, you just got to be dedicated and you got to sacrifice things. You know, like, you know, when I was, you know, starting my career, or, you know, I was only 18, 19 and all my mates were going out partying and that. But I used to go with them but never used to get on the, on the drink. So that was my sacrifice so, and it, it worked for me. Mm. And But then after, once you're playing and you, you reach the top, it's all about time and, you know, uh, when, when to be able to let your hair down. When I did have hair. Yeah. Um, it, it's just about time and, mate, you know, you can't do it all the time but there is times. You need to, like, you know, when you have a win um, or when you celebrate. have a bad loss, you need to celebrate and also um, when you have a bad loss, you need to get together and that that's where you build uh, bonds and mm. it, it gets stronger with the team and the teams that have got a really close bond are the ones that – you know, they go well in, in in NRL. Yeah, no, good, good one, Jimmy. I, I totally agree with that. You know, sacrifice, discipline, dedication, drive—they're all um, uh, what makes someone great and and someone even greater um, when they want to go to the top. So, thanks again, and um, good luck in your future endeavours at the Gold Coast Titans. And um, I hope you make the top eight next year. Thank you, Mets. No Thank you, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Every time I've let you in, you've let me down.